of my desk here. We have active weather alerts. Uh, let's see, we have a severe thunderstorm warning issued by the National Weather Service in Flagstaff. There's a severe thunderstorm warning for Navajo County in north central Arizona and Coconino County in north central Arizona until 615. This was issued just a little while ago. At 539, a severe thunderstorm was located 11 miles south of Winslow, moving southwest at 15 miles per hour. <clears throat> there is a wind hazard, a hazard of 60 mile an hour wind gusts and quarter sized hail. The source is radar indicated. Impact, hail damage to vehicles is expected. Expect wind damage to roofs, siding, and trees. This severe thunderstorm will remain over mainly rural areas of Navajo and Coconino counties. This includes State Route 99 between mile markers 24 and 33. Precautionary measures they want you to take. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. They're expecting at least one inch of hail and 60 mile an hour wind gusts. Now moving on to the flash flood warning that they have. <clears throat> this flash flood warning is also from the National Weather Service. <coughs> Excuse me. The flash flood warning remains in effect until 6.45 p.m. for Navajo and Coconino counties. At 4.31 p.m., Doppler radar indicates rainfall continues across the warned area. Up to two inches of rain have already fallen. Expect flash flooding through area washes over the next couple of hours. Some locations that will experience flooding include the Hopi Reservation. This includes the following streams and drainages. Tees Toe Wash, Little Colorado River, Weepo Wash, Jedito Wash, Orabi Wash, Coyote Wash, Highway Yalen Wash, and Palaka Wash. This includes the following highways. State Route 264 near mile marker 384 and State Route 87 between mile markers 386 and 406. Precautionary actions they would like you to take, move to higher ground now, act quickly to protect your life. Once again, those are from the National Weather Service. We wanted to get that uh, out of the way before the rest of the news. Be very safe out there. And remember, a storm can be up to 20 miles away and you can still experience a flash flood. So be safe, uh, do exactly what they're ta uh, talking about and contact local authorities if it gets uh, that nasty out there. We, uh, our prayers are with you guys. <clears throat> Let's see, I have some comments over here. Uh, Mario says, good evening. Good evening, Mario. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Jay is uh, giving us a thumbs up. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you guys also for liking and sharing this news to help spread it out there for people who might need to know. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the normal news for tonight. Hello, I'm Chris Lee with LPNN. <clears throat> bringing you all the news that is news and none of the news that isn't most of the time. Uh, these are our sponsors for our episode tonight. We've got Ted's Marine H&R Block right here in Page, Arizona. We've got the Page Recreation Department, the Page Public Library, and Big John's Texas Barbecue. Don't forget to give a shout out to our sponsors and thank them for helping to support us so we can get you the news in real time. <clears throat> All right, we got all kinds of interesting things. Uh, if you guys hadn't noticed, there have been all kinds of flash floods over the last few days here. And uh, there was a really nasty one over in Kanab. Let me see if I can get this video up. And I believe there was actually one today as well. It's been uh, getting really hammered out there. And uh, hold on while I adjust this, I apologize. Give me just one second. All right, there we are. We'll go ahead and uh, transition this over for you. There we go. All right, so this is in uh, Kanab. This is Kanab flooding, I believe this was, let's see, yesterday at 10.20 a.m. is when they put this up. I believe it was the day before flooding that was going on. This is from Kanab, and this is from Reed Timmer. He's an extreme meteorologist, and uh, we'll go ahead and play that for you real quick. <clears throat> Once again, this is in Kanab, Utah. Uh, still significant runoff in Kanab, urban. Uh, the road is impossible. Hopefully the fan has seen this race run out like this for quite some time. It's definitely a significant flooding event in Kanab.
can see they really got hammered. <clears throat> Lots of, uh, there's bigger. a Perea River there. That was uh, Perea River. So experienced some severe flash flooding. Uh, they actually had some cars that were almost completely underwater in that flash flood, and the Red Cross actually had to open up a shelter for some people out there. So uh, all in all, it has been uh, an interesting weekend, very dangerous. Hopefully uh, everyone's safe out there. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, let's see what else we have here for you. Uh, also, Zion, Zion National Park, their flooding was going on. It says uh, they have a flood damage update. An intense storm on Wednesday, July 11th caused flooding, mudslides, and rock falls. Several popular tra trails, including Angel's Landing, Kayenta, Upper Emerald Pools, and West Rim from the Grotto to Cabin Spring remain closed. So uh, that, that was a huge one that happened there. Um, this is a, an update about the Red Cross in Flagstaff. Flagstaff, Arizona. The American Red Cross Northern Arizona, led by DAT Captain Brooke Clanton, has opened a shelter in Flagstaff at Sinagua Middle School uh, on 3950 East Butler Avenue. So far, six families and possibly more residents may need a safe place to stay. Heavy rainfall causing flooding in southern area of Flagstaff near I-40 and Highway 89A affecting many homes. The American Red Cross will continue to update as soon as more information arrives. <clears throat> we also have, uh, let's see, there's some other updates. Um, obviously, we had some other flash flood warnings today uh, for Kanab. There was another one and uh, central, uh, south central Kane County. Uh, we put that out there for you guys. Uh, yes, uh, the Flagstaff area flood update, they had uh, sandbags from the Flagstaff City Government uh, Facebook site. They are offering uh, sandbags for people that need them in Flagstaff. They're going to be available at the fire departments down there. Uh, if you follow the uh, Flagstaff City Government's Facebook page, they will be posting updates on exactly where, when, and how many of those you can get. So all in all, it has been a very rainy last few days, uh, a lot of damage out there. Hopefully uh, everyone stays safe. <clears throat> uh, let's see here we have, uh, oh okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just looking over here at the comments. Sometimes uh, they don't roll through as fast as they should be. All right, we got Lori's giving me the eyes and she says I see, all right, good. Thank you very much for joining us, I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you very much for liking, commenting, and sharing. All right, let's see what else we have for you guys today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see, I do believe, here's another picture. Uh, this one is of Flagstaff. Let me see if I can get this over here for you. This is from the flooding uh, in Flagstaff. <clears throat> this is actually a tweet. Uh, the bottom of the tweet says, wow, may need to add a marine forecast to Flagstaff. Something like one to two foot seas down Route 66. In one week, we went from extreme dry to the great flood. As you can see, uh, things got pretty hairy down there. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, yes, this is uh, the, from the Flagstaff City Government. Due to heavy monsoon moisture, sandbags are available for residents to fill and take away at the following locations in Flagstaff. This is an update. The east and west ends of East Elder Drive in Siler Homes, 1701 Ponderosa Parkway, past fire station number two on the right, Aztec Street, near Francis Short Pond. The bags are available on a first come first serve basis. Residents should come with a shovel to fill their bags. So that is an update from the Flagstaff City Government. <clears throat> and they do have, I believe, another picture you can see here of uh, some more flooding that the, that the city government took, I believe. Let's see if we can't get this up over here for you guys. Just so you can get an idea of uh, how extreme some of that flooding was in Flagstaff. <clears throat> Definitely a bad day. We went uh, from needing tons and tons of rain uh, to getting a little bit too much in too short a period of time, I think. But uh, either way, the moisture is welcome. Uh, let's just hope the property damage and uh, is, is low and that uh, no lives are lost during all this time. All right, well, let's go ahead and move to the next one. <clears throat> Um, a more on flooding. The U.S. Forest Service, Service Kanab National Forest 
has implemented a temporary closure of Forest Road 149 near Kendrick Mountain on the Williams Ranger District due to safety concerns related to the active monsoon season. While the pumpkin trail itself is not closed, forest managers recommend use of either the Kendrick Mountain or Bull Basin trails while the closure of Forest Road 149 is in effect due to the lack of trailhead parking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Gina says, I missed it all. Well, you're going to have to watch the beginning. I can't cover all of that, unfortunately, Gina. There was quite a bit of uh, going on, but there is an active thunderstorm warning and an active... Let's see, Jody says, hello. Hello, Jody. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate that. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, Kimber says, yikes. Yes, definitely. There is a lot of stuff going on out there over the last few days in the rain department. So uh, be safe out there. Make sure you, uh, make sure you uh, follow our page or keep on an emergency radio. Anytime that we get any of these emergency updates, make sure that you share them. Whenever we put out a flash flood watch or a flash flood warning by itself, go ahead and share that so you can get it out to as many people as possible in case they didn't hear it on a radio or anything else. We wanna try and get the word out there for everyone so that they can stay safe. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, moving on to uh, a little bit more normal news here. The Arizona Snow Bowl is opening a summer tube slide, a ropes course, and other activities. This is from ABC 15. <clears throat> it may not be winter anymore in Arizona, but Arizona Snow Bowl, the ski resort in Flagstaff, has, <clears throat> excuse me, has a handful of activities that adults and kids can enjoy, including a scenic ride on the chairlift and a new 150 foot tube run. A lot of fun. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. The ski resort opened for the summer season on Friday, July 13th, after U.S. Forest Service fire restrictions. To have the ski resort unveiled two 150 foot lanes where people can tube down the mountain. They have a mini ropes course. Kids and adults can walk and climb over wooden beams, rope ladders, steps, suspended tires on, uh, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, suspended tires on a ropes course. They have a bungee trampoline. Uh, it says here, jump to new heights and do a few flips on this large trampoline while harnessed to bungee cords. Uh, let's see, they have a scenic ski lift ride. You can sit on a ski lift and go up the western side of the San Francisco Peaks where you can view parts of the Grand Canyon and Sedona's Red Rocks from 11,500 feet. They have treasure panning. You can sift through water and sand to pan for gemstones like they did in the Old West. They have a barrel roll. Kids can test their balance on this rotating barrel. It's a free activity. Uh, let's see, there are now more ways families can enjoy the mountain with new base area attractions, said General Manager J.R. Murray. <clears throat> uh, all right, so that's, that looks like uh, some fun stuff going on here. Uh, let's see, Gina said, got that part. Uh, Gina says, thank you. I'll watch the beginning later. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, let's see what else we have here for you guys tonight. So many things, so many things. All right, we do have a bunch of uh, interesting things coming up here in Page, Arizona. Uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m., uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., actually, they are doing a zoning ordinance update. It's a community workshop where they're inviting everyone in to look at the new zoning uh, code that is coming out that they're doing a complete rewrite on, and uh, they want you to come down and... Uh, see what's going on and talk about it and uh, maybe come up with some things uh, some maybe you have some ideas maybe you have some concerns either way from 6 to 8 p.m. tomorrow night is going to be that community workshop so make sure you head on down there <clears throat> uh, let's see what else we have here uh, the page housing study <clears throat> so uh, a while back uh, if you guys remember there was a housing study that was done in conjunction with NGS and the city uh, the page housing study presentation is an area they're gonna have some recommendations on what they think might be able to help fix it and uh, all kinds of other things so once again that is Wednesday July 25th at 5 p.m. <clears throat> excuse me all right, uh, let's see what else we have here. We do have a couple of things. Give me just a second, sorry about that. Let's see if I can get this to, oh, I'm moving myself instead of my background. Hold on one second. 
And uh, we do have some uh, activities coming up in Page. I believe the last day for registration on this one. This is from the uh, the Page Recreation Department. The 2018 Youth Soccer uh, Program is going on. And you can see here behind me uh, most of the information. So we'll go ahead and put a link in it so that you can uh, check that out for yourself if you're interested. But I believe, yes, the registration deadline is on the 18th, July 18th. So you've only got a couple of more days to uh, make sure you get down for that. Let me see if I can't get you a link here. So, uh, let's see, okay, I'm just checking over here. My computer keeps locking up. Uh, the internet uh, sometimes can be interesting. So let's see if we can't get you this link, maybe. There we go. All right, copy. All right, this is for the Page Recreation Department. If you're interested in registering for the soccer program or any of the other amazing programs they've got going on, uh, check out their website. They are going to, I believe, Arizona this Friday. They're going to have a field trip, and if you want to register for that, you have to do it by Wednesday. So you can go to this link, and you can uh, check it out, or you can go down to the city of Page, and you can register there. Uh, that's part of the Camparama for Arizona. Camparama is still the information for that. All right, uh, from, let's see, from the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, they have Pioneer Day coming up. This is going to be on July 24th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. They say, bring your own blanket and lunch for a picnic on the lawn at Weaver House. They're going to have a sourdough baking demonstration, craft projects for kids, fruit picking, orchard tours, lawn games, music, all kinds of crazy stuff. They've got a free shuttle and parking down there as well. The Lonely Dell Ranch Historic Site is located down a gravel road closed to vehicles. So you have to park in the 14-day parking lot near the fish cleaning station and the maintenance complex and then hop on to the event shuttle. That's going to be down towards uh, Lee's Ferry, I believe. So that's a lot of fun there. All right, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and move on to normal events and then we'll do the weather. <clears throat> Let's see, today is the 16th, so tomorrow is the 17th, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see, yes, all right, just checking. Let's see, the Glen, Canyon, uh, the Glen Canyon Lecture Series is going to be going on at the Community Center, I believe, and it's Art on the Rocks with Richard Jenkinson at the Community Center at 7 p.m., also going on tomorrow, uh, let's see, they've got the summer reading program still going on at the Page Public Library, uh, sexical theater music, and a warm-up. So all kinds of fun stuff going on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, anything else going on? Let's see, we have, uh, looks like yoga at the community center at 10.30 a.m., pool club at 11 a.m. Uh, at the community center, 1 p.m. is bingo at the community center, and uh, let's see, okay, we do have the public meeting for the zoning code update that we were talking about. And uh, don't forget that Glen Canyon Lecture Series at the Community Center from 6.30 to 8. And that says here, it says, Art on the Rocks with Richard Jenkinson. It says, learn more about the stunning rock art in the region and tour the Southwest's sacred history with the former president of the Utah Rock Art Research Association. The lecture starts at 7 p.m. The doors open at 6.30 for refreshments. This event is free. The Glen Canyon Lecture Series is provided as a service to the community and area visitors by the Glen Canyon Natural History Association, the Powell Museum, and the Page Public Library. So all kinds of fun stuff going on. All right, let's go ahead and move you guys on to the weather here. <clears throat> if I haven't completely messed up uh, all of my stuff here, give me just a second. <laughs> Moving all this stuff around has caused some fun, I guess. All right, almost, almost, possibly. Give me just a second here, and then we can cover the weather. Once again, uh, if you see any uh, any breaking news that we have on flash flood watches or anything like that, make sure you share that so the information gets out to those who need it in case they missed it on a radio or something like that. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so tonight we got a low of 75 degrees here in Page. As you can see, we have a continuing 15% chance of rain throughout the night, and it spikes a little bit into the 20% range uh, overnight there. The wind's going to be staying, it looks like, below 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow we have a high of 98 degrees, partly cloudy with a low of 77, and uh, several chances for rain in the, about the 15% range again throughout the day. On Wednesday, the temperature is rising up to 100 degrees, partly cloudy, 
Wind's still staying below 10 miles an hour, it looks like, and still that 15% chance of rain. And then the chance of rain looks like it's decreasing for Thursday and Friday. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how it goes. Uh, tonight's episode was brought to you in, pipe, in, in part by all of our great sponsors here. Don't forget to give them a shout out and uh, thank them for helping bring you the news in real time. And thank you very much for commenting, liking, and sharing on all of these posts. We really appreciate it. It helps us get the news to you in real time. And after all, if not you, then who? You guys have an amazing night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow on The Morning Show.